All right, what's going on, guys? No, no, checking in. I have with me today Douglas Block, counselor, author, good friend, spiritual advisor, you name it. You guys have seen him on this channel. We are going to do another series together. I will be asking him a bunch of questions. He will be answering today's topic is depression and how it can be a blessing in disguise. Douglas, go ahead and say hi and feel free to look into the camera for this one. Hi, nice to see you guys. All right, guys, so please listen, learn. I hope you enjoy it. Doug has a lot to offer. He has been a huge integral part of my success in getting better and I have no doubt he can be a great part of yours as well. So Doug, you've said in your videos that depression can be a blessing in disguise. Um, what, do you, what do you mean by this when you say it? Because it, it sort of sounds like something that's hard to believe. It, it is, but it's based on a paradox that I've learned over the last five years of my, my own struggle in helping other people, and that's that every adversity contains within it the seed of an equivalent or greater good. Just as the lily, the sacred lily in the Hindu tradition grows out of a, the mud, mm. uh, so can we have pearls of wisdom and pearls of compassion and pearls of learning come out of the mud of our own depression and hardship. Okay. And so what are some examples of this? My favorite example is a person you're familiar with, Bill Wilson. Sure. Who uh, started Alcoholics Anonymous. He's probably one of the most inspiring cases I've ever had or read about, actually. Uh, here's a guy who was struggling with a disease that almost killed him, literally almost killed him, and he rose out of the ashes and created uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, co-founded it, an organization that helps millions of people every day because of the suffering he went through, other people can find redemption. That is a blessing in disguise. You know, he didn't choose this. He was chosen, and he rode to the occasion, and that's why he's one of the, one of the greatest figures, I think, of the 20th century. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Good example. Um, can you find some examples in your own life? Well, as you know, and as you interviewed me in this first uh, video on your channel, I think it was called Major Depression and Survivor's Journey. And my channel is called Healing from Depression Naturally. And that was a 1996-1997, nine-month agitated suicidal depression. It was just, well, you know what it's like. You went through the same thing years later, right? And so there were a number of blessings that came out of that. The first was compassion. I think you can agree with all this. I, I know you can. It, that type of pain opens your heart. Yeah. Before then, I used to look at someone struggling with some neurosis or a difficult marriage and I'd say, what's wrong with him? Can he move through it? Sure. Now I understand, hey, there for the grace of God go I. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. The second uh, lesson, the second blessing I learned was when I was about to be hospitalized in the fall of 96. A friend of mine said, hey, look at this hospitalization as a training ground and learning about skills that you can use to cope. And Sure enough, it wasn't just that nine days in the hospital. It was the whole friggin' nine months where I learned, you know, it, it was like someone, you know, this phrase sink or swim? Right. I was in the situation where if I didn't find the right coping skills to help me through my pain, I was going to die. It was like Bill Wilson, you know, and they, as they say in AA, grow or go. Right. So I was forced to come up with skills. And now I teach those skills to people, you know, all over the world. So, but I wouldn't have learned them unless I had been forced to learn them. That was a blessing. So trial by fire. Trial by fire. And the third thing was, uh, I have a, learned a new meaning of the word distress. Now we've all, you, you live out here in Beaverton, suburb of Portland, right? Don't you ever get stuck in traffic? I mean, Highway 26 is bad going course, down, right? Of course. And I grew up in New York City and you know, the Long Island Expressway makes Highway 26 look like a th throughway, right? But um, what I used to you know, r uh, think of as a great crisis, like being stuck in traffic, I now think of it as an inconvenience. Now why is that? Because when you've been on the abyss, when you've looked into the abyss, when you've been suicidal, when you are struggling every moment, whether to take your own life, then everything else is pale in comparison. You know, they say, don't sweat the small stuff. Sure. After you've been through a really intense, agitated, deep, dark depression, everything is small stuff. A forced change of perspective. Forced change of perspective, absolutely. Those are three things I can tell you right now. <laughs> this question is a, is a very fair question to anyone who's suffering, but can you see these blessings when you're actually going through the pain of your disorder? This, Noah, is an excellent question, even if I wrote it myself. <laughs> but um, it is an essential question. And the answer is, when you're in the midst of the hell, and you are struggling just to make it through the next day, or hour, or minute, or breath, you often cannot see the blessings in the skies. That's why it's a good idea, if you're someone, and you have a friend or a loved one going through a difficult experience, it's not a good idea to tell them, like, oh, just think how thankful you'll be when you get through this. No. They're, they're going to think you're nuts. As a matter of fact, when I was going through the experience, this very wise minister told me that I was going to write a book about my experience. I said, you're crazy. 
uh, you know, I have no books left to write me. That's one of the reasons I'm, you know, I'm giving up on life. So how could you possibly say this? Sure. So it's very difficult. This is why you need other people around you to hold the field of healing because you can't hold it yourself. This is why I say the second pillar of the three pillars of recovery is reach out for support. You cannot, and I say you cannot, get through these periods by yourself. How do I know this? Because after I recovered, I read every single memoir I could of people who had been through depression and come out of it. And every single memoir, whether it was by uh, William Styron or Mike Wallace or uh, the gal who wrote uh, Prozac Nation, right. uh, they all said at the end, without my friends, without my family, without my psychiatrist, uh, I would not have made it through this. Well, it's so. because it's impossible to, to think clearly, see past right. your own suffering. You can't see the end. You can't see your good, but other people can. Right. So the answer to your question, no, you can see the blessings, but as long as other people can and hold it for you, then they can support you as you float in this, you know, I call it, what I call it, treading fire and spit, tre treading water like a sea of fire. Sure. You're, 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 you're hanging on there and then you come out the other side and then afterwards you look back, oh yeah, now I know I went through this. Now I know why my wife or my husband divorced me. Now I know why I had this operation. Now I know why I had this breakdown. Oh, I'm a better person for it. Hindsight's 2020. Hindsight's, I now can see, in, with hindsight, what a good thing was for me. But at the time, I couldn't see it. So you, you can, well, Sometimes when you've been through three or four of these situations, you can say, hey, I remember last time good came out of it. So I'm, I have the faith to hang in there. So, so you can learn from past experience, but it's awfully hard. You still need other people to help you out. But if it's a, a new experience, a novel experience for First you. First time, no. You just, have, you, just have to, you just have to hang in there until, until things shift. So what can you do when you're in the midst of the pain and, and you can't see anything that's good, completely lost in it? So <clears throat> when you're treading fire, when you're in the abyss, and you can't see your way out, and you don't think anything is going to come of it, you can still find moments in the present, something to be thankful for. I've talked about this in my, in my uh, video on gratitude. Like, like in my case, at least I had a house to live in. I wasn't homeless. At least I had you know, food in the cabinet, right? So scanning the, the world car. for positive. Yeah, and, 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 and also, as I mentioned in my, in my uh, video on unbearable pain, bearing the unbearable pain, you know, there are little breaks in the pain. Like one day, I remember I saw a beautiful sunset in the midst of winter in Portland. A rare feat indeed. And you were able to actually enjoy for it. For that moment. Okay, so maybe there's 24 hours. Maybe for one minute, I could feel some joy. But that one minute was like putting something in my emotional bank account I could draw upon. So every now and then, a break in the action occurs if you're aware of it. So no, you can't see the outcome. No, you can't feel the blessings. But there are moments of light and always something to be thankful for. And so it's not a whole lot, but it's better than nothing. And eventually, eventually you will come out the other side, you will be resurrected, and all will be well. Yeah. I remember when I was in the midst of my, my depression, I remember something you told me to do was, was if I couldn't find happiness, to look for negative happiness. And I read it from your book, and I remember you saying, if, if you couldn't find that the pain was gone, be grateful and be able to acknowledge that there was less pain in certain parts of the day, at least in the beginning, that you were less uncomfortable and let that be a sign that things can start to get better. And I remember actually I banked on that that notion, that idea. It was the first way that I was able, able to ever realize or accept that maybe, maybe things could get better. Yeah.